Happy Flossmas, everyone! Uh, today is Flossmas number nine. Nine? Yes, because today is Wednesday, December 9th. Um, I'm Jessie. Welcome to my channel, Bobo Stitch and Quilt. For everyone who is returning, welcome back. I'm so happy you continue to come by and see me. For everyone who is new, welcome! I hope that we have some good times together um, in these next few minutes. Um, and so, um, you know, I haven't been explaining what all these videos are. I kind of assume that people are kind of stumbling across these. They might have an idea of what's going on. But, um, but right, so Flossmas have these little short videos that we're doing on a daily basis um, to kind of get us into the seasonal spirit, whatever that seasonal spirit is for you and yours. Um, my family, we are actually not Christian. My, I am, um, I was, my, I'm half Asian and um, my dad converted um, and so we are a Buddhist family but my dad is an American and or so is my mom but it, it's a uh, they um, so but she uh, um, but he grew up in the States of uh, um, well he was an army brat but the um, obviously he celebrated Christmas when he was growing up and um, and so my family celebrates a secular Christmas so we kind of get all of the fun things that, that you do not to say that the religious Christmas isn't fun because I love Christmas carols. I love like, like seriously y'all. Like when I was in high school and in junior high, like I really wanted to be part of the choir just so I could sing Christmas carols. I didn't want to do anything else. Just the Christmas carols. I love Christmas carols, but yeah, um, <laughs> that's my favorite thing. Christmas carols. Um, there are, I, I don't, I don't even have a, there you go. That's going to be my favorite thing. Christmas carols. But the, um, my favorite is Oh Holy Night. Like I do think that is such a beautiful song, very impactful. And I love singing it. Um, I love that. So oh Holy Night is probably my favorite one. And the other one that I really like is Do You Hear What I Hear? And so, um, but continuing on the trend, good Christmas albums that I really like. I already mentioned Kelly Clarkson. Um, I actually like Pentatonic's Christmas album. I'm going to give you a two for today. I like Pentatonic's Christmas album, but unpopular opinion or popular opinion, I don't know. You know, Hallelujah, not a Christmas song. Should not be on that album. Fight me. It's not a Christmas song. Listen to the lyrics. So, um, so, but I, otherwise, but the rest of the album I find really good. And I also really love Josh Groban's Christmas album as well. Um, I will link to Spotify playlists um, because that's what I, uh, that's what I subscribe to. And I have, you know, so I'm going to go ahead and, and hopefully, um, but Spotify does actually have a free option um, for anyone who doesn't, who doesn't, it just has ads. It just pop, pops in advertising. Um, but obviously you can find both of their music on YouTube. It's also all, apparently YouTube is like the second or maybe even the first like streaming mechanism for music in the world. And actually that makes sense. I listen to a lot of music on YouTube. Like if I'm not watching floss tube videos, I'm, I'm, I'm watching YouTube music videos and then it just goes on playlists and I just listen to them. So anyways, check out Pentatonic's Christmas album and Josh Groban's Christmas album. Sometimes I get stuck on Josh Groban and I'll listen to that on a loop like all day long. Like his voice is like velvet. It's like, oh. anyways, so favorite things. So that was my transition of what Flossmas is to favorite things. <laughs> um, so I do a tea time Flossmas for everyone who's returning. You know what this, what's next. So I've been opening up the Adagio Advent Box every day. I don't do that on camera. I do that off camera. So that way I can taste the tea right in front of you so you can see what my opinion is. <laughs> Today's tea, good old fashioned, steady and true Earl Grey. So it's a premium black tea infused with oil of bergamot, a citrus family scion, scion, S-C-I-O-N. How do I pronounce that? Scion? Okay. Anyways, um, I'm going to taste it as it is, just straight black tea. Uh, when I studied in London, my, the person who ran our program was British, grew up, was British, and she said you never milked. You don't ever put milk or cream in a fragrant tea, like an Earl Grey. And and so I kind of, that always stuck out in my head because when she was like showing us the different ways to drink tea, that's how I discovered it. I actually really did like my tea 
with milk and sugar, which made sense because Chinese milk tea has milk in it, obviously. And I like, I'm like, oh, um, Thai tea, my family's Thai, my mom is Thai. Thai tea has milk in it. So, and I grew up on Thai tea. So I was like, yeah, of course I like a builder's tea that has a milk in it. But she had said, my professor had said that you don't put milk in a fragrant tea and not include a growl. So anyways, I never did. And I, and I was in a coffee shop and I saw that they had something called the London Fog. And I was like, and it was listed under tea. And I was like, well, what is that? And apparently it was an Earl Grey with milk in it. And I was like, hmm, I did try it. I did like it. Today I'm doing it straight black. Um, maybe my next cup when I, because I can usually get two cups out of one, out of one bag. So FYI, if you are buying a tea bag option, which I don't know if I recommend if you do any kind of composting because you can't compost a tea bag. It's not a paper tea bag. Uh, so when, going in the future, I'm going to get loose tea. But because um, we compost. But the um, but if you do get a tea bag, I can usually get two full cups of of tea at its full strength out of it. I use a teapot to to brew the tea, and I can and so anyways. Oh, this is good. This is a good Earl Grey. It's the, yeah, it's not too strong. It really is. It's got, it's a smooth flavor. I'm going to recommend the Earl Grey. Earl Grey is not my favorite, but I'm going to go ahead and put some milk in my next cup and see how that tastes as a London fog. It's my story about teas. All right. I'm punchy today. It's because I, because of work. It's okay. All right, stitching. Where are we on stitching? As everyone, a reminder, we are now going into day three of Frosted Pumpkins Winter Carriage Ride. Um, as a reminder, I'm working on these projects for six days. The goal is to do at least two hours each night um, for 12 hours of stitching for the 12 days of stitching, which is my interpretation of the Black Needle Society's challenge. Um, and where are we today? Here we are. I made a lot better progress last night than I did the first night. Now, uh, I ended up stitching. I'm going to be better about tracking my time. That's one of my stitching resolutions. It doesn't really matter. I don't really care. But I'm always kind of curious, like, how far I get, like, how much I can stitch in a period of time because I'm curious. Like, I'm kind of like, hmm, you know. But anyway, so what I got done last night, I did finish all of the houses um, uh, the, the little bump there is the horse. And so I did not consider that part of my, 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 my goal. So I finished the, the houses except for one little chimney suite. I started to build out this person. There's this little, and then I did this whole banner on top here. So that's what I got done last night. Um, I don't know. I think I made pretty good progress. I don't, I haven't counted the stitches. I don't plan on counting these stitches to see how much I get done. Um, and so, so that's where I am. Tonight's goal is to finish this tree. That's going to be my goal for tonight is to finish this tree and to start working on winter. So that's what I'm going to try to get done tonight. But tonight is Wednesday and it's Mass Singer night. Now it's not a comp it's not a, an elimination one tonight. So I don't know if I have to be paying attention to clues and stuff like that. But it is on tonight. I think it's a, it's a sing along. So um, yeah, y'all, I watched the Mass Singer. It's hilarious. If y'all have not been watching Mass Singer on Fox, hilarious. It's hilarious. And it's fun. like, I don't, sometimes I'm like, I, I don't know who that celebrity is, <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, so, but there was one time because I grew up on hair metal and hair bands that when Brett Michaels was on one season, like, like he started singing and like after like maybe five bars, of whatever and then I started to see and then he started to move I looked at my husband I'm like that's Brett Michaels <laughs> and I was like I don't know what that says about me that I know my hair band people really well um and so far though he's been the only 80s hair band person that has there's been other 80s performers and I didn't recognize there was one that I was kicking myself because I kept saying she sounds like Tina Turner I just want to say she's Tina Turner, but I don't think it is. Like, like the clues don't match or anything like that. I go, I don't think it's Tina Turner, but she sounds like Tina Turner. It turned out to be 80s icon Taylor Dane. And Taylor Dane 
sounds like Tina Turner. Go listen. Go listen to some of those early hits and and you realize it's not exactly Tina Turner. Like it's not the same voice, like, you know, but she has a same kind of um tone as Tina Turner. Anyways, alright. I'm just babbling now. What? Do I have anything else? I don't think so. Alright. We're getting there, y'all. December 9th. You know, I keep thinking like I'm going to be gone after next week. It's not, I've got two more weeks of work. I'm, I, um, December 18th is my last day in the office and then I'm on vacation until the new year. But in my brain, it's somehow next Friday. It's not, it's not next Friday. Is it? Mm -hmm. It is next Friday. Dates are hard in quarantine. They just are. All right. Well, in which case, I think that's it. My dogs are getting groomed today. So they're gone right now. My husband took them to the groomers just now for their appointment this afternoon. Uh, usually when they come back from getting groomed and cleaned, they're super wiggly. And so I'm going to try to get a video of them today to add to this video so you can see how wiggly they are. Um, I have a Dachshund Jack Russell mix, a Jackson. Um, she gets zoomies, like most dachshunds do. She gets super zoomies and um, when she gets super wiggly. And then we have a Chihuahua Corgi mix. She is as cute as you think that sounds. Um, and her nickname is Wigglebutt because when she gets really excited and she's wagging her tail, like her whole body moves, like her whole butt moves, like her tail hits the side of her face, like it's hilarious when she's in maximum wiggle as we call her so i'm going to try to get a video at some point in time between now and the end of flossmas so that y'all can see how cute my dogs are do you have cute dogs is there a way to post pictures in the comments if you have an instagram with cute dogs please tell me what your instagram handle is and i'm going to go follow you for your dogs because that's what my instagram looks like by the way y'all it's all cross stitching quilting and dogs that's it and I do follow friends and so then some of their photos come up that have nothing to do with those three but otherwise my Instagram is really those three things I'm all about the dogs all right anyways um, speaking of Instagram you can follow me at, at Bobo underscore Jesse C Jesse spelled with an I so and it's in the notes below so if you're not already come follow me it's not super exciting but I do post things all right till tomorrow wherever you are I hope you're having a stitching good time bye bye Wiggle butts. Wiggle butt. Oh, who's a good girl? Who's going to be a good pretty girl sits? What about you, Jordan? Do I get wiggle butts? Wiggle butt. Yeah.